What's up, guys? War here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be talking about one last thing inside of Season 7 uh, for Diablo 4 in the PTR. And that is going to be about the, um, the new Occultist gem or Occult gems. So first, let me get out of the way. This To me, this is just a direct copy-paste of Season 1 with the Malignant Hearts. Uh, but... Maybe you guys won't see it that way, but this once we I explain more of how this works, you guys will see that it works exactly the same as the Malignant Hearts. So, um, Occult Gems. So, these are a new addition to Season 7, and one of the biggest things is that they're going to add on additional powers, increased damage, damage reduction, maximum resistance, boost in attack speed, movement speed, a lot of these things. So, they're going to be some uh, some really good buffs. However... Uh, the jewelry part is really cool with these because you do not lose any resistance or armor. So each gem is going to give you armor plus resistance, and then each one is the exact same. They all give 160 armor as well as 8% um, to your resistances, which is really, really nice, by the way. So that's really cool. So that way you don't have to worry about socketing in royal skulls for armor or anything else. You can just put that stuff in there, and you are good to go. So... Next, let's talk about the gems and how you get them before we get into how they work. So inside of the map here, you're going to come over to the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is going to have this lovely lady here, Galena. And you're going to talk to Galena, and you're going to be able to trade all of these resources. So if we go look at the PTR actual notes, you're going to meet with Galena at the Tree of Whispers. Um, she will craft occult, occult gems in exchange for fugitive heads, restless rots, and gem fragments. So in order to get the fugitive heads, in order to trade for those, uh, we you basically just do the uh, the new witch tides, and you're going to be trying to get the recovered heads when you do the fugitive part of this whisper. It is a very rare chance that the head actually drops, but when you do get it from farming these, you can come trade it in for these juicy, juicy um, occultist gems. Next is just trading in your rot. You have restless rot here. You can trade this as well as your um, as well as your gem fragment currency in order to craft some of these gems or occultist gems as well. You can get restless rot from doing the witch tides. Um, we talked about that in another video. So it's very easy to rack up a, bu a bunch of restless rots. Now she's not going to show it because I already have all the gems, but this is where you can go and get these now. Let's talk about how they work, okay? Let's talk about how these gems work and why they're going to be so cool in addition to your character. So you got a, a few different levels. You got Magic, Rare, and Legendary, and each of them have increasing or different powers. So as an example, let's look at the ones that I equipped. Um, I have one here that says, for each of my auras and hexes an enemy is inflicted by, they take 4% increased damage from me. So... One thing that is unique about these is that each of these gems directly correlates with your witchcraft powers. So pairing these up, um, depending on what you want to do, is really going to how you're going to like maximize your character. And it's going to make for some very unique combinations. So um, again, to this one, for each of my auras, I think I only have one aura. So uh, this gives me an aura. This gives me an aura. So I have two auras here. Yeah, I have two auras. So for each of my auras, they would take 4%, which means that each enemy is taking 8% increased damage from me. Pretty nice, right? So uh, if we go back, the next one that I have says, when you have three or more Psych Witch powers slotted, the cooldowns of your defensive, your mac, and your trap skills are reduced by 20%. Now on my skill bar, I have three defensive skills um, slotted. So what we need to make sure that we do is have um, three or more Psych Witch Powers. So if we go back, um, that's Eldritch. This is Aura Psych. This one is Aura Psych. And then this one is a regular Witch Power. And then this one is a Psych. So we have three Psych Powers slotted, which allows the ability to actually be working. So now every single time that I'm doing anything, I cast a cooldown. It is immediately reduced by 20%, which is pretty cool. The last one that I chose to work with this uh, ball lightning build, or the one that I like, is while I have an aura, I pull in enemies toward you every eight seconds. So what's also really hilarious about this uh, copy-paste kind of thing from Season 1 with the Malignant Hearts, 
This is literally the same thing as the ring for the necromancer. The necromancer does the, it's the corpse ring that pulls them all in. It's the same thing as the uh, tornado power where it pulls them all in. It is the same thing, nothing new here. But this does work really well for this build because ball lightning is just going to be, you know, I cause them to rotate around me. It pulls them in and then they die. It's really, really cool. Um, I will say that overlooking all of these, some of them are really nice. Like your non-unique, they get 25% more potency. Um, they get, yeah, I mean, it's just some of this, like your unique witch powers deal 40% increased damage. Uh, like the resistances here and damage reduction is really nice. Um, fortify stuff is cool, but overpower sucks. This one I really do like when you have three or four, uh, three or more Eldritch Witch Power Slotted, you get 25% increased move speed and critical strike chance. This one is really good. I just don't have three Eldritch Powers. I got one, two. I don't think I have three. Yeah, I don't have three. So I'd have to find another one in here to, to kind of throw in um, somewhere. I think, yeah, these are the last ones, I believe. Hex Eldritch, yeah. So I'd have to find a slot because that one is definitely high on my radar. I think this one is really, really cool. I mean, I could even take that one out for this one um, for the aura to be activated. Like if we could figure out a way to. Um, this is this is really nice for the uh, critical strike damage. Enemies inside the aura take increased critical strike damage, which is really nice. Um, it's kind of tough to pick and choose what you want to take out. Like it's it's really tough. This aura specialization might go away like this one, but it's just really strong. So there's some really good ones in here, like 60% control duration and 20 lucky hit. Like that one's pretty bad. Um, th this one's really good for the damage over time for poison builds. That's really nice. Um, overpower again, it's super weak. Uh, all of these different types do increased damage to hexed enemies. That one's pretty strong. Um, while you have three or more Eldritch Rich powers slotted, every five seconds uh, you gain an Eldritch tag. That's okay. Um, when you have an aura active, your ultimate skills each gain the Witchcraft tag and deal 10% increased damage. So if you're doing ultimate stuff like with Rogue, with uh, Reign of Arrows, that could be something that's pretty strong. Your summons deal more damage. They did give big buffs to summons, but again, a little too late. Uh, while you have Witch powers slotted, you gain barriers, which is cool. And then um, you gain primary stat, max life and stuff, and you're always on 100. So some of these are pretty cool. Um, the majority of them don't seem that great. But then again, this is just the PTR. So uh, just getting involved in these um, gems are really cool. But with that said, guys, these are the brand new occult gems. Um, they seem really cool. And from what I've kind of played with it, just very little. Um, they seem like a, a nice addition. It's like a small little buff. It's like having the runes. I mean, it, it's... These, these don't like contribute a big enough buff for anything. So it's more of like a utility kind of like, you know, supplement to what your character lacks or, you know, needs a little bit of a boost in. Um, I think it's pretty much equivalent to the runes. It's like having three more runes on your bar to correspond with your powers. So uh, the mixing and matching school, but besides that, it's basically a direct copy paste of the malignant hearts. You just throw these in these slots. They give you a power done and done. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, guys, that's how the, uh, the new occultist gems work or the occult gems work. Make sure to like the video guys, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about these. And if you have any questions about them and I'll be sure to answer those. And, um, yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoy the PTR. If you're playing, I know POE two starts in a couple days, which pretty much everybody's going to be playing. So I don't know how well these are going to do for anything for season seven, but we will see. So don't forget to subscribe, guys, and as always, stay gaming. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.